Hey guys, it's Kara. Today I'm talking to Patrick Fabian from Better Call Saul about this season of the show and next season, which is the final season. Check it out. Did you see okay. it? Like, did you see these episodes yourself? Or yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I caught up. I'm happy. I just wanted to double check. It's the Vince Gilligan directed episode. Whoa. Holy, can I just tell you, I was not prepared for that episode. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's all last night. Oh, I didn't get a chance to see it yet. Oh, uh, okay. Is it, it is crazy good as I suspect. It is. I, like I said, I just came into it expecting a regular episode and I did notice yeah. his name at the beginning and I was like, oh, directed by Vince Gilligan. That's interesting. Cause like, I don't know how many does he direct? Does he often do? Never? himself from the show over the last two years like he's not even in the writer's room you know he's at, it's peter gould's show and it was designed to be that way from the beginning but vince just loved it so much they stuck around for two seasons basically oh. um and so he's been he, he'll come and direct one every year and so this is the one he had this year and it's a doozy i oh, just yeah. I, I visited set twice oh okay well you saw so on set, that's where Bob found my dog. You told me that story. I was wondering, is that where? That was that that's set? Dog. Yeah, 108 degrees, 10 days in a row. And that's where the dog came out of the desert and sat in front of, uh, sat underneath one of our trailers. Okay, how on earth would a dog end up there? I don't even right. get that. Wow. Uh, that that's uh, Providence, I suppose. The, the universe trying to rescue her, you know? I'm so glad she was rescued by you guys. And yeah, no. So she, and now she's walking around Los Angeles. Oh, she's forgotten the desert, trust me. Yeah. Okay, desert, so, talking about. Well, that was a rough beginning. Um, that, but that episode, I mean, just stellar. Insane. Insane. And like, I have the same feeling it brought up that like feeling you would get when you're watching Breaking Bad. And you know, yeah. like it's, you can't really explain it except if you, when you watch Breaking Bad, you of course have that feeling every episode and it's very specific to Breaking Bad. So it was really um, so good. And just seeing Bob like that too was so interesting to me. Like he was transformed. So just such an interesting episode. All of it. Of course, we miss having Howard out there in the desert. <laughs> There's no reason for Howard to be in the desert. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, but, but seriously, but, uh, but there is that sense of uh, FOMO without a doubt, because it's an episode like that and you want to be a part of it. Yeah. And the fact that it's just, it's just, you know, it's, you know, there's not enough space. Uh, th that's not what the show is. I get that. But Because in that episode, there was only what, like probably to you know even even ray was hardly in that episode yeah no kim's barely in it as well but she's in it in a good way but uh, yeah i mean look, look that's they've earned they earned those episodes right by doing the other things and they earn this this expanse of we're just gonna do this we're gonna do this thing for the entire thing and and those two you know banks and odin kirk i mean come on come on okay we're in the middle of this pandemic but if there's gonna be an Emmys, can we just get one to Bob and to Jonathan and to Ray, at least? Have they not won any Emmys? No, the show hasn't won any Emmys. The whole show? Um, I think Ariel Levine won an, uh, an Emmy for those, uh, those uh, interstitial post things they do, like the, the, the Chicken Man videos and, and the stuff like that, Special, specialty videos. But no, I think, I think Saul is, uh, 0 for 38, 0 for 39. Wow, that's, I'm really surprised I didn't even know that. I mean, look, I know that matters, but to everybody out there who loves the show, there, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Because I'm not, oh, it no, matters, no. but there's I, so much love for the show that maybe even without the awards, at least there's that, you know, there's so much love. Yeah, absolutely. But like an episode like this is where you just go, oh, right. These guys do Herculean effort. They do great. And there's, uh, you know, are they the best? Uh, I don't know. But there's nobody better. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So let's skip last night's episode, which was the, this episode we're talking about. And we're going to go to the one that, because we're technically, now I'm mixing up the dates. But so the one that the 507, you finished up that episode nicely. Yes, you were like, I was 
Yes. Last, well, you didn't have the last word, but it was the last word in that that scene was big. Your scenes have been good and potent, I think, this, this yeah, season. Yeah, you know, I, I have not, uh, I, I've not been uh, a strong storyline because there have been other stories that, you know, need to be fleshed out more, but I'm not gone. And I serve a purpose, and you're right. I've been given really nice things. You know, the the, the hooker scene with yeah. Ed Baker Jr. and Fork, that was such a great thing. Um, really, really fun, and it came off well. Uh, and then this episode as well, and when we were shooting it, one, you know, uh, Melissa Bernstein, it was her first time directing. And she has produced, like, she's been a producer on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. She's produced over, I think, something like three or 400 episodes of television. And this is her first time behind the camera. So it was in her hands. So that great shot of Jimmy getting split. Yes, I mean, that was her. That's her. And working with her was great too, because she's really attention to detail and, and story. And, you know, we were trying to get a hand on that last bit, you know, exactly how that was going to work out. And, uh, and it worked out, you know, it worked out, it worked out really good. And, 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 and I forget what happens leading up to it when I, you know, when I watch it. Cause I've read it, but you know, I'm not till the very end. So I'm watching all the placements of, of uh, Saul's emotionality leading to the point where he's spying on the family that he's screwed over. Right. And so, so he's feeling what he's feeling. And so then, whoop, then all of a sudden I show in and it's that, it's that weird, like, Oh, Oh, we're back in this, this thing too. And it really sets them off. And um, as somebody, somebody made a meme of um, it, they cut it in half. They showed Giancarlo walking away from Los Pollos Hermanos with it blowing up and he's got this stoic face. And then they have the picture of me with my stoic face with Jimmy behind me going. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Yes. And they were just like, uh, like all the, all the cool guys keep their, keep their cool about them when things blow up behind them. That's that sort of right. And it's yeah. interesting too, because you kind of, right. Everything has changed for Saul at this point so much over the seasons. It almost is like you forget the whole, that it was the same show with Chuck. Like you don't even really think much about Chuck, but Chuck is such a huge factor. And what went on in those years at HHM is such a factor in what's going on now but you kind of forget. It's almost like that little, uh, that flashback that you had with Kim when she was uh, however old, getting picked up at middle school or not oh. getting picked up. And it was like that little bit, that history tells you everything. So it's interesting to bring that back as every time you show up, every time Howard is there, it's a she reminder. Up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And when, and he finally unleashes and says it, right? You kill my brother. Yeah. And you're like, Whoa, because even the audience that's rooting for him, for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for Saul, uh, they know that that's not true. They know that's a lie. And then they witness him like that, following the lie and doubling down on it. And, yep. and that's, when you, that's when you go, oh, oh. And that's when you get to see the cracks, I mean, the real cracks, the real conflict, the real, oh, right, he's probably not going to end up in a nice ranch-style house in Corrales with Kim, is yeah. he? Or, or is he? I don't know. We don't know. So, so it's like, I know, everybody's speculating about that. So what the heck happens to Kim? Where, what is, goes on? It's just, she stay and she's just, we don't see her in Breaking Bad? Or well, somebody, They said, you know, uh, you, you never saw Saul Goodman go home in Breaking Bad. You only saw him at work. So, you know, maybe yeah. when he goes, she's there smoking a Carlton 120 and watching TV. I don't know. It's Kids, a Carlton 120. <laughs> is 120 milli anyways it's okay 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 thanks for the explanation what is it one more season is that right after this one we'll go back to work sometime after september and uh we'll knock off season six 13 episodes this time not 10. oh that's nice so it's probably all mapped out what is going to happen you know that's funny they're not big mappers they're big creating a situation and then saying, now what? Now, in terms of mm -hmm. landing points, they have some suggestions, right? Because of what exists. But as somebody pointed out to me, you can have Saul, it doesn't have to run up against it. And Saul ends and now Breaking Bad starts. Instead, it can be like this. There could be scenes that are happening. It would be basically like seeing un unshown scenes of Breaking Bad. So events that are happening during Breaking Bad, you could be seeing. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah. I love that idea. Because you're kind of are anyway. You're seeing everything happen after later at post Breaking Bad. Yeah. So, very interesting. So I, okay. These, these, you know, this writing team has not failed us so far. I don't expect they're going to fail us in the last 13. So. Yeah, I think it'll I wrap up nicely. You're all over again. You're in Carol's. Carol's second act. Yeah. yeah. I did the last four episodes of that, playing a love interest with uh, Patricia Heaton. And it was really, really fun. Her, Kyle McLaughlin, uh, a lot of funny people on the show. And it was nice to be on a sitcom. It was nice to be you know, doing that kind of work for a change. I hadn't done that in a while. And it was a live audience. It's funny. And I got to get some jokes. And I mean, she's Patricia Heaton. She's got like a shelf full of Emmys. And she's never not been on TV, it feels like, for like 20-some years. Yeah. She knows what she's doing. And she's really good at it. And so it was fun to get a script on a Monday and then really squeeze all the funny out of it by Thursday or Friday and shoot it. It was nice. So is that wrapped up for the season? So you didn't run into any problems? That was that finished before uh, before the, the shutdown happened. And, That's uh, perfect. So they're waiting to find out about a pickup. Um, but they finished strong. They had Kelsey Grammer in the final episode set up as her ex-husband. So that was fun. So, you know, I got to be on stage with him, you know, briefly. And Are you on Black Monday, too? I'm on Black Monday, too. I did, uh, like, three episodes of that, uh, which was really fun. Um, I got to work with Andrew Reynolds and Casey Wilson. Uh, I'm playing the governor of New York. It's so funny. Like, I get cast in the show, and I'm like, oh, this is, I'm so excited. I've loved Andrew Reynolds for a long time, particularly his work in Girls. And, um, and I was excited. I was putting my tuxedo because the, 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 the episode was a party. And so I'm putting on my tuxedo, I'm thinking, you know what, him and I are going to become best friends, and we're going to write a, a, a brother movie where we're like cool brothers with one another, and da 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 And then I show up on set, and I realize, oh, wait a second, no, you're the over 50 governor of New York on this. He's the young boy in a suit. You are not brothers in any, any universe. And I, 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 you know, I ran into myself again. I was like, oh, oh the perception of who I think I am versus who I am. I mean, he doesn't have any lines. He's, he's just smooth. Okay. He's but perfect. he's 40. I'm just saying he's 40. So I'm not, 40 is not old, but he is. I know this because I sat down with him myself. I did a, an article um, with him for the New York Times. I would wow. say la I, probably last winter I did it. So it wasn't that long ago. And I think he was turning 40 or just turned 40. Well, wow, that's um, a good look. He does look good. I mean, he seems They're very wrong. young. I mean, he looks like, I still look at him and I see him in girls, of course. But, uh, sure. so you're not very far off from him age-wise, just telling you. Be his older brother. Well, guess what? Side by side, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> that was Patrick Fabian. I have another video with him talking about our obsession with Tiger King. Check that out next, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tap on the red subscribe button so you catch all my videos with actors from your favorite TV shows and movies. 